Well, time has come to plant the new orchard. We took out our hard shell almonds uh, a couple years ago now, and because they were just getting way older, they were almost as old as me. Some of them actually were a little bit older. And they just stopped producing and were falling down all over the place. So we took them out and turned it into all bare ground, and now we are planting it. So we've got a crew out here putting in trees, and we are going to be putting in the water source. I've got this stick to try and get the tube close to the line. We'll see how well it works out. Either I'm going to do it with my stick or my dad and brother are going to be pulling it and putting it on top. So anyways, here's how we plant a new orchard. the trees from the nursery and they come in a bunch of trucks and basically keep them in there to keep them cool and moist at least as best we can and then pull them out in these flats and go and stick them in the ground but once we get them into the ground they're gonna need water pretty quick so going to be getting the irrigation set up as soon as a row gets finished planting prior to planting a crew comes out and marks out the spaces where the trees need to be planted with straws the trees are spaced out in an even and uniform manner to ensure that each tree has enough room to grow while also allowing equipment to drive through the orchard. You want to make sure every tree has enough room to grow, but you also don't want to cut down on the efficiency of your growing operation. These trees are being grown for food after all. Once all the tree spots have been marked, a crew comes through and tosses out the trees for planting. Most orchards we plant are half non-perel and half pollinators. Nonpareils are one of the best selling nuts, but they can't pollinate themselves and need a different variety of tree to help out. Once a line of trees has been thrown out into their proper spots, the crew comes behind and digs each hole by hand and plants the tree right down into the ground. They then tamp it down to seal up any air pockets. This relatively small orchard took about 7,500 trees in total, which in this orchard in particular comes out to right about 140 trees per acre. That's far too many trees for us to plant alone, so we're very reliant on hiring a labor crew to come out and help out plant the orchard. Once the crew is finished planting the trees, we need to hurry up and get the irrigation system going to help further seal up any air pockets, as well as give the baby trees a drink of water before they dry out. All of the irrigation line had been put out way beforehand, but we didn't want the tube to get in the way of the guys planting the trees. So once an entire row of trees is done, we go along and move the drip tube up on top of the berms. Or we at least attempt to, in my case. So similar to our other orchard, we have this tube that all the water comes out of, and this is drip. There are no sprinklers on it, so it has to be right at the base of the tree, especially when it is quite young. So I built this little hook stick, patented. Take this hook, catch the tube, and drive along, and it slides along, and I can lay it right at the base of the trees, which saves plenty of time of having to grab each end and walk down and pull it tight. Tool's working pretty well. 
and get about three rows to every one of my brother and dad. So I win. And the problem with this tool is I have to do it only on one side. So I have to go all the way around, deadhead all the way back, and can only ride along the left side with my throttles only on the right side, but hey, still going pretty quick. I'm going along just fine. And it'll get one of these kinks in it, and it just rips this tool right out of my hands. But better getting pulled off the four-wheeler, I guess. Well, this little tool is working great. It's just as everything is warmed up, the tube has gotten more pliable and bendy, and it's been binding up a lot more, but it's still working pretty good. Getting very close to being done. I love California, but man, it goes from winter to summer in like three days. This time last week it was wet, and I was ready to build a fire in the fireplace, and now I'm about ready to go home and put on shorts and flip flops and come out here and finish this. It is hot. I think that was the last one. Nope. Missed one. Okay. For real this time. Finished. Finished laying all the tube out next to the trunks. My dad and brother are still hooking up everything. So I'm either going to go help them or get a little bit late. We got an appointment tonight and uh, gonna pick up on this tomorrow and get all of the water going. So, see you tomorrow. Day two, time to hook up all of the hoses to the water source and get the water going to give these trees a drink because it might be nice and cool right now, but it is gonna be warming up any second. I can already feel my skin starting to get warm. We are flushing the ends of these which lets all the water and debris to pour out the end, but that's gonna to lead to zero pressure in the line. So I'm gonna go through and close off the lines. Generally we'd use little hard plastic figure eights to tie these. Those are expensive. So right now they're expensive and they're hard to take off to flush them. So we are just going to be using some orchard tape to really quickly bend the line and tie it together like that. There we go. Now we've got pressure in the line. So you can see, now that we've got pressure in the line, it's dripping out. And it drips out about every two and a half feet, every three feet or so. Very efficient water-wise. And that water will seep over and water the base of the tree. Got one line that has no water coming out of it at all, so go see if we've got a kink in the line somewhere. Yep, there it is. So you can see, we've got it all wet along there. We've got a kink, we'll dry it from there. There we go. Some of the lines have a little bit too much tube on them, so we gotta trim them down. Two hours later. All right, well, finished putting all the tubes together for the day. We're gonna do the other half tomorrow because it is starting to heat up. So I'm just gonna finish up a couple things here. I gotta pull some trees out that got planted too close to the filter station back there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and flush the filters. We have these sand pots back there, just big metal containers filled with sand that filters the water as it comes out of the canal 
from way up there because the water that comes out is pretty grody and we don't want it to plug up all of the little emitters or our micro sprinklers on the other stuff. So this drip tube is very efficient when it comes to water usage. It puts the water directly on the ground and it starts soaking in immediately. It doesn't get as wide of a coverage as micro sprinklers, but when we go ahead and bury it, it's going to put that, that little small bursts of water directly on the roots of the trees and it's going to help out with evaporation in the hotter months because if the water's not on top of the ground, then it has a harder time evaporating. But when they're baby trees, we need the tubes to be right on top so that way we can see exactly where the water is going and make sure that every single baby tree is getting water. Otherwise, they'll dry out. A couple of these trees got planted way too close to the filter station, so we're gonna pull them out and we'll use them for replants in our other orchards. One of the interesting things about being a firefighter is you become hyper aware of any sort of smoke coming up in your area, which is not great when you also live in rice country because rice farmers are constantly burning off their old fields. I say that as a rice farmer myself, constantly having fields being burnt off to get rid of extra straw and to get rid of certain diseases in the straw that could harm the rice. But whenever you see the smoke column coming up, you always start wondering, hmm, is that a vegetation fire that I better start heading towards? Or is that a rice field being burned off? But all of that gray smoke over there, that tells you it's probably some form of rice straw. That has a very distinct coloration. It's not a huge, thick, dark column. So, not gonna worry about it. So this is the filter station. The water comes from the canal way up there in the hills, comes out through the turnout, and that's what we call this. So that basically goes to a very large pipe underground. And then it comes up through here, and we can see how many gallons per minute of water we're using right there. And then we have it come all the way through to these two filters. These filters are large metal pots that are filled with sand, that the water comes through the top and gets filtered out, similar to like a pool filter, but they need to be backwashed every now and then, which uses the clean water from one pot to go through the bottom and flush the water out through the top of this one. So we're going to go ahead and manually flush them because we do not have the automatic portion set up for it yet. So we have the automatic flush control set up. Basically that little, we have a little electric control over there that sends a signal to these, which are little magnetic uh, magnets in here that pulls a plunger up and down and reverses the water flow as needed. But since we don't have that set up, we just have to manually turn it, which is what's gonna cause it to flush. So the filters weren't actually that dirty this time, but that's because we're not using all that much water. We're flowing around 400 gallons per minute through there right now, but it's not using that much water. The water's still pretty clean, but as we get later on in the year, the filters will pretty much be shooting out nothing but black water because you have algae and dirt and bits and pieces of wild pigs that get sucked through there and end up in the filters that we have them flushing probably uh, when it's really bad about once every hour but on average we flush the filters about once every four hours but those have been going since about eight o'clock this morning and they're not that dirty at all so not worried gonna leave them go until uh probably tomorrow tomorrow all right day three time to do the other half of the orchard 
Looks like my dad and brother started without me, which makes sense because I was gone for the evening. So I'll just go ahead and get started over on this side. Well, this one doesn't have any water coming out of it, so guess we'll go find out why. Well, it's not turned on. That might be the reason there's no water coming out. Science. Yes, science! I think we might have let this one flush a little too long. All right, all of the ends are capped off, so everything's under pressure, but over the course of the day or so, the lines have got a little moved away from the trees. And since we need the emitters to basically be right on top of the roots, I'm gonna get my little hook tool and go along and move the lines all back to under, right next to the trees. No matter whether the water comes from a canal or rain or from a well, water is the single most important resource to farmers, which is why we try to be as careful, respectful, and efficient with this resource as we possibly can. You can have all the land in the world, a literal mine worth of fertilizer, and bags upon bags of seed, but if you don't have water, you're not going to get your crop to grow. Water is a shared resource, not just between farmers, but between all of humanity, and we all need water to drink, and so do our trees and other crops. The water from these tubes probably would have subbed over given a couple of hours, but by just spending another hour or two by myself out here moving the lives across, I was able to ensure that every single drop of water was going exactly where we needed it without any waste. In this day and age where everyone is worried about the amount of water that farmers use, especially my fellow Californians, and especially when it comes to almonds, we want to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that we are more than capable of managing this beloved natural resource. Food grows where water flows, as they say, and we want to make sure that both food and water flow freely and abundantly in our beloved Golden State. Last thing to do, go flush the filters again. Oh, a little bit dirtier than yesterday. So even this wastewater we use for rinsing doesn't really go to waste all that much. It does go into this ditch over here, but this is what becomes a big breeding ground for frogs and whatnot. You can always hear in the summertime when these are generally full of water because they're being flushed every four or so hours or so, You'll hear all sorts of frog noise and all frog sound and singing going on out there. It's one of life's little joys is hearing the frogs going. So with that, the new orchard is completely planted. Now we'll just be, we got to put out the cartons to keep the spray off of them when it comes time to apply herbicide out here. And we will be watering them several times over the course of the summer to keep them growing. But yeah, that's a, new orchard planted from beginning to end. If you enjoy this sort of video, don't forget to like and subscribe. It is free on your end, and it really helps out me and Slug. We are coming up on a thousand subscribers. And once we hit that, one other metric, we can start actually making money off of YouTube. So you'll be directly supporting us financially by clicking one button. So thank you so much for watching. See you on the next one.